Oh hi guys, welcome to another day. Yesterday's vlog didn't upload, it got three minutes left to go and my laptop auto updated something. Now I'm sure I've turned the auto update stuff off so something else is running that I was unaware of and decided to update itself and it knackered it. Well I went to continue to upload it and it decided to start uploading afresh and needed two and a half hours which I didn't have so unfortunately yesterday's upload didn't occur so it's going to be even further behind than it was so that's really annoying um, but anyway I'm off to pool today so that should be fun nice and easy day nice and long day I'll do a bit more footage and stuff like that and uh, speed it up as I generally do, I've got to start getting some more um, royalty free music because it's going to start getting dull listening to the same stuff over and over and over again um, but anyway I shall see you when I get to my destination
me at my destination in Paul. All fun, all good. Uh, a few things happened on the way round here that would have been caught on the camera, although me being the clever twit that I am didn't plug the camera in, did I? No, I forgot. So the camera went and died. So a few things that I saw that went past I haven't got footage for, which is really annoying because one of them was a car that had gone, we're on the M3 and the car's facing the wrong way on the bank, on the, on the bankman on the bank and you can see where it's front near side tyres gone pop dug in and just gone straight across you can, you can see the curve all the way across and it's by one of the junctions and so they've gone straight across the junction up this bank and it's two relatively young ladies um, late teens I would guess but then again guessing age in this day and age is almost impossible and it kind of goes back to what I was saying about skid pan. You know, there they are, trundling along, you know, turning along quite happily. The front near side goes, and I've had one go on a truck, I've had one go on my car. Both times I managed to keep the damn thing in a straight line and got it to the hard shoulder. There was a funny smell in the vehicles, don't get me wrong, it was a bit like... Ugh. And when a truck one goes, oh, you... You, if you're if you've got your hand kind of you got you got your steering wheel and you've got little cutaways if you've got a hand resting in the cutaway and then on their style thing when it your wrist aches for days afterwards it really wrenches you it's not nice when a steer axle tire goes it hurts but she's been going along trundling along and I'm not gonna surmise that she was on a phone or chain to her mate I'm not gonna do any of that. She's just trundling along perfectly happily. I'm going to guesstimate she's trundling along perfectly happily like that. And the tyre goes, and woof. She's straight off, straight round and up the bank. And the thing that irritates me is it's not her fault. She's had no training on handling the car whatsoever. None. I mean, you've all been through the standard driving lessons and stuff like that. There is no car control at all. It's can you make it move? Can you park it? Can you reverse round a corner? You don't even have to do an emergency stop anymore. How stupid is that? You don't even have to know how to stop safely. Bonkers, isn't it? Absolutely bonkers. And the thing that gets me, now I'm obviously not, I'm not a parent at the moment. Not that I'm aware of. I've never heard a woman say that. But I'm not a parent at the moment. But the thing that gets me is, you've got two young ladies, probably not long out of school, not long past their driving test, or one of them's not long past the driving test, whatever, because obviously one's a passenger. So you've got two families, Two sets of parents. They're driving down the M3, a major road, fast moving traffic. Near side front goes, off up the bank, no trees, no sharp things, everyone survives. Traffic wombles are there doing all their whistles and bells, she's in floods of tears, everything slowing down and stopping and of course I'm sitting up here and I can see everything for miles and I go I can see what's going on. And I just sat there and thought, so she's gone that way, over a slit road, nothing on the slit road, and up a bank, to a stop. What happens if it had been her driver's front that had gone? She'd have gone the other way, into faster moving vehicles, into a central reservation, all because she's never had any kind of training about what it feels like, about what happens when that goes. Now the way she went, fortunately there was nobody there, it's a Saturday, it's relatively quiet, and she's shaken, crying, and she'll get home and need a new car. It's not her fault, a tyre's blown. I can't exactly say, oh she was there driving stupidly, a tyre's blown. It's not your fault, she's not going to get points, she's not going to lose her licence. It, it's a horrible situation to be in, it's nasty. 
and she's going to go home and get another car. But if she'd have gone the other way, if it had been the other tyre, Range Rover giving it beans down the third lane, head on, straight into the central reservation, probably flipped her over the central reservation. And why? Oh well, you don't need skip turn training, you don't need car handling training if you drive according to the highway code. I, I, it just, it, it, just, it just freaks me out. Skip pans are fun. Anybody who's ever been on one, they're fun. You spend the day sliding. You never catch the first one. That little sod, you never catch the first one. But they're fun. And you can do them as red letter days. You don't actually have to do them as a course. You can get fun days out. You know, go down somewhere, a little cage round of some piece of crap car, and woof, off you go. You get them as fun days, or at least a couple of years ago, last time I did one, you did. So you don't even have to do the course, you just have a fun day doing it. Oh no, don't need to do that. And I see things like that and it's a case of... I understand there's quite a few accidents caused by people being idiots, you know, watch this! And that's the end of that. And to be fair, I've ended up the wrong side of a hedgerow before now. <laughs> In my younger years, I've gone, woo, how'd that happen? <laughs> yes, I've, I've, yes I've, I've had the odd, oops daisy It does happen. One thing I'll always say is never trust the abilities of a driver who says, I've been driving 30 years and never had an accident. How do they know what the car feels like at the point just before <gasps> that? How do they know that they've got to the kind of limit? They don't, do they? So when something goes wrong, <laughs> they're the ones that are going to roll. You know, I, 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 I've always said you can't really... You don't understand driving until you've binned it at least once. <laughs> I know that's going to be controversial. There's going to be people saying, oh, no, blip, 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 blip. But it's true. I mean, you can make your car go, you can trundle along, you know, never had an accident, seen thousands of them. But, you know, you, you never really know what to do until you've been in that situation of, oh, that stung, oh, that's going to be an insurance claim and a half. Oh, whoops. <laughs> you, you don't. But you think about the accidents, you know, you, you, you hear about them all the time, the M5, the M6, the M whatever. Car's gone over the embankment, been hit by an oncoming car, everyone's died. And you sit there and you think, how many of those accidents are down to people just not understanding? You know, the car's gone a bit skew whiff and they've just freaked. They don't know what to do. And a tiny little bit of training. A tiny little bit, a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days during a week, whatever. And they'd have known to just do that. Maybe spin the other way, at least, and then go up the embankment and be safe. And you sit there and you just, it just annoys me. It could, it just bugs me. Such a simple thing to add in. I mean, look at Finland. You, they're driving in ice virtually all the time. They've got, I thought, what is it? They've got to drive a couple of years, do various courses and car control stuff because of obviously the, the conditions they, they have to live in and driving, I should say. And they have to be, they have to have been driving as a learner for I think it's two years and completed various courses before they can progress on to take a test to then get their license to carry on. Great. Perfect. One of the things they have to do. Car control course. You know, just because it's icy doesn't mean that's the only reason you should do a car control course, is it? I mean... Ugh. But I, I see things like that and I, I just... I feel for the people in that situation. Because they have 
no clue. First time a front tyre blew on a truck, it was a near side one. First time a tyre blew on a truck with me driving. Ooh, ooh, that scares you. Ooh, it's not nice. It destroys the stairs. <laughs> it destroys that corner. It, it, ooh, it's, it, no, it's not fun. You know, and it, it, you're never ready for it. You're always driving along, you've been driving a few hours, obviously the tyres are up to temperature and why it's gone pop. And you've been driving a little while and it's always that moment, you know, you're always gonna yawn or you're halfway through a sneeze or you're just getting some crap out your eye or you, whatever. And then it goes. Ooh, ooh, it's not nice. You know, I thought it was bad when my Fiesta's front blew once when I was doing 40. Yeah. That was easy. That was, that was, that was fine. That was just a, ow, ooh, what the, bit of damage. You know, that kind of thing. One of these, <laughs> it's a kind of moment. It's not like a, a trailer tyre going. A trailer tyre goes, you just hear the bang, look in the back, you see cars swerving to avoid the rubber and you think, oh. That's a pain in the rear end, isn't it? Pull over and hazards on. You know, tag axle goes, it's annoying. Steering one goes, ooh. <laughs> mm, that's, 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 that's a whole new ball game. I feel for people in that situation, whether they're young, whether they're old and experienced, it's not nice. And I'm not saying that training would have avoided the spin, depends on what she was doing at the time. But like I said, I'm assuming she was just driving perfectly normally when it went. But you just... It's just the art, you see it, the gouge, all the way, literally perfect, all the way around. And you could see, you know, just facing the, the opposite direction, so the, the near side is visible to all who wants to see it. No damage, she hasn't been clipped by anybody, and the front tyre is where it's missing. <laughs> it went bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> it just went, see you later. <laughs> but I feel for them. And any, anybody that it's ever happened to, I, I, I genuinely, I, I feel for them. Because you are so unprepared. You, you just are. You, once you've done your lessons and you've done your assessment, it's not a test, okay? It's an assessment. You've done your assessment, you are so unprepared for driving it unbelievable and no pass plus doesn't make up the difference you just I've always thought car control car handling lessons and I mean handling lessons should be included Finland do it okay they drive on the ice most of the time but that's not the only reason they should be included. But anyway, that that there won't be any forward facing footage of that because like I said, I didn't plug the camera in like an idiot. It's just oh. <laughs> But anyway, there we go. One other thing. I've got to defect this when I get back because I hit a bump and it fell off. <laughs> it was up there in the dump file. I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> annoying so I have to defect that and get another one but your height indicator that's set to 14 foot and I'm in an Actros that's about 13 foot 9 13 foot 10 why is that set to 14 foot because the trailer nah the trailer's not bigger than the unit why is that set to 14 foot now if you're a general haulier you need to learn to set them exact because you don't know where you're going to day in day out and one of the places you go to might have a 13 foot 10 bridge and you might be 13 foot 9 but have set that to say 14 foot so you'd be able to get under it but you'll see that you think oh I can't get under it there's no other route in I better phone the yard and say I can't make the delivery they'll ask you what vehicle you're in you'll tell them they'll have a go at you but when you get to big blue chip companies 
like this and you know the retail giants all that kind of stuff they will predominantly set a couple of extra inches higher than you actually are now the DVSA formerly VOSA will not have a go at you if this thing is set too high if it's set too low they might get emotional now by that I don't mean okay so I'm 13 foot 6 I'll set it to 15 foot 2 no 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 a couple of inches fine because you're guaranteed if you think you're 14 foot and you're 13 foot 10, you're not going to hit the bridge. So they don't mind if it's too high, but if it's too low, oh, they'll throw the toys out the pram. Because um, <laughs> you're going to use that as reference, aren't you? And then go, da da -oink. But there is a reason why they set them on the blue chip companies slightly higher. We use dedicated routes primarily, especially in London. And the thing is, sometimes that route will be closed. So you'll have to follow a diversion. Now when you're in London, those diversions, they can be a bit dodge. They could be proper dodge. You go down them and you're like, ooh, I don't like this. And the thing is, you might come to a bridge with a height restriction. Now when you're loaded and your lift axle is down, fully loaded and your lift axle's down you are going to be lower than when you are empty and the lift axle is raised in actual fact if you raise the lift axle on a vehicle you will go up a little bit there's about an inch raise on it give or take and when you're empty and your suspension's got no weight acting on it woof, goes up a bit doesn't it so when you leave the yard and you go trundle, trundle, trundle to your destination, and you're 13 foot 8, you've measured it, you know you're 13 foot 8, and you've gone trundle, trundle, under the 13 foot 9 bridge, you've unloaded, raised your lift axle, and you've gone back, under the bridge. Now you made it when you went in, so when you're going out, are you going to slow down for that bridge? No, you're just going to belt along, aren't you? <laughs> Then what? Oops. You've got to make a phone call no driver wants to make. Because it usually ends with you losing your license at some point. So the reason they set them slightly higher than you actually are, and I would recommend to set them slightly higher, unless you know you, you're a general hall here and you... you you know you're going somewhere with a lower bridge, then definitely know the exact height. You should always know the exact height, whatever. Always set them slightly higher. Because when you're fully loaded, you are slightly lower than when you are empty. So if you set it slightly higher than you are, it's like two inches higher than you are. You're guaranteed to be correct. So there you go. A little thing added on to the end of it, because I was having a conversation with one of the other drivers when I started my shift and it, it, it was just something that came up in the conversation and I thought oh yeah you wouldn't think about that would you but you know all those videos you see on YouTube and it's of a truck ploughing into the bridge I wonder in some of those circumstances has he just finished his delivery and he's going back when he should have used an alternate route. He fitted going there, but he didn't go in back. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, larger companies will tend to, if you're using specific routes, if you're doing regional work, then most of them, they'll be set slightly higher. And of course, what's been happening recently in some of these vehicles is some clever little so-and-so has been resetting these now th th this is a quite simple you got your winder so you can set it however you want they've been resetting these to what the vehicle actually is and you get into them and a 14 foot has suddenly changed to that which is perfectly fine but we have some trailers on the yard that make you 14 foot 5 
<laughs> so you should always, 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 always measure what it use what's on the bulkhead of the trailer. It usually says based on a fifth wheel height of one thousand two hundred and fifty millimeters, you will be four point two meters high or four point four meters high or anything. If you don't know what it is, you've you've got Google. Do a conversion, see what it says, round it up, maybe add an inch. That's your height. So for example, the 4.4, that's roughly 14 foot 5, so I'd set it to 14 foot 6. I have set it to 14 foot 5 before, because it's it came out, 4.4 metres came out on the Google thing as 14.44 feet. So I set it to 14.5. Realistically, having thought about it, I should have set 14.6. But fortunately, the day I was doing that, it was going... Well, there, there were no bridges I had to worry about. It was all motorway stuff, so... What, 16 foot something, I think they are. Um, there, any, anything under... I think it's 16 foot. I'll have to double check that. Anything under 16 foot will always be marked. Anything over it won't be. So I'd, I'll double check that and update you at a later date. I know there's a number of drivers who watch me will probably go and commenting underneath, so I will find out pretty quickly. But anyway, that's enough of me blathering on. I've gone on for long enough. Um, obviously, I've got to go back. By the time I get back from here, I'm, I'm, it's going to be dark. So I'll end it now. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share about, do whatever it is you usually do. I will see you in the next one, which is tomorrow. I am also going to be working Monday. Yes, you know how my Monday is sacrosanct. It's myself and my other half's day off. <laughs> She's got a new job. Guess what she said? I'll do Monday. You see, guys, if you're not engaged or in married, full-time relationship, that kind of thing, please understand one thing. You will have a set of rules to live by. She won't. So I've decided, fine, if she's going to work, I'm going to work. They needed an extra driver. I did five days last week. I was down for five days this week, so I can do a six-day week. Sorry, I'll go in. I'll work Monday. So, yes, I shall see you in the next one. So cheers for watching, guys, and see you later.